Hey everyone, welcome to the very first video on my new channel here on YouTube. My name is Raquel. I am a born and raised Wisconsinite. I am 28, going on 29, and I'm here to talk about my love for Catholicism. Um, <laughs> there are so many awesome Catholic YouTube channels, um, but they're usually hosted by people who have been Catholic their whole life, so I thought that it would be good and helpful to have the perspective of someone who is choosing to become Catholic um, later in their life. So I'm here to contribute. And uh, in this first video, I want to talk about my transition from New Age and paganism and witchcraft to Catholicism. But first, I do want to preface, I want to say um, that I'm not making this video out of contempt or condemnation of the things that I used to believe um, and the things that I used to practice. but um, and although I don't believe that they are true or anymore, um, I still have friends that are in that community and I believe that God reveals himself to us when, when our heart is open to him. And I, I'm not sure that it's my job to try to convert people that are not open to Christianity whatsoever. And in fact, it might actually push them farther away. So, um, but with that being said, let's get into this video because I think it's important that you know where I was, where I am now, and the kind of things that I'm going to be talking about on this channel. So first and foremost, I did not grow up Christian. Uh, my mom was baptized Catholic, but she was not confirmed. Um, we were not baptized, my myself, my brother, or my sister. I know we went to church at least on occasion when I was a child, but I don't remember. I remember maybe visiting one church, couldn't tell you which one it was or anything like that. So uh, just not church people, but I knew who the Christian God was. I knew who Jesus was through culture, um, but we, I was not, we were not a church going family or anything like that. So I did not get into spirituality or religion until my mid twenties when I was doing some soul searching after leaving college and just finding myself very lost in the world. And um, I had minored in women's and gender studies in college, so I was a big time feminist and I ended up, uh, I ended up coming to, or I guess, what, what do I wanna say? I ended up being introduced to paganism and witchcraft through Wicca, which I didn't end up practicing, but um, if you don't know, Wicca is an earth-based religion, so an earth-based spirituality, earth-centered. Um, so I had been a longtime feminist and I had found this religion or this spiritual practice that fit very well into my feminist leftist politics. <laughs> um, so um, it fit very well at the time. And so I was practicing a lot of New Age stuff, um, paganism or earth worship, uh, witchcraft practices, um, just a lot of things. I was reading uh, tarot divinationally. Um, I was, let's see, what else was I doing? going to a spiritualist church during the summertime, which is a church where the there are mediums and you they will talk to the dead and they will give you messages from your from the other side. So I was just into a lot of different things. <laughs> um, and let's see. So I identified as a goddess worshiping pagan witch for about four years. And then last year, in the summer, so summer of 2020, I had been watching Doreen Virtue's channel. If you don't know who Doreen Virtue is, she was a big New Ager. Um, she was big in the New Age and she was an author and all kinds of stuff. And so, so she is a Christian now. She's a fundamentalist. Um, so I would just tune into her channel every once in a while, just honestly, just to see what kind of crazy Christian things she would say next or like just <laughs> um 
I would just go on there to, I was just fascinated by like how out there I thought she was at the time. And then uh, I ended up watching an interview between, so she was interviewing someone named Allie Beth Stuckey. Allie Beth Stuckey is a podcast host. She's an evangelical conservative Christian. So she talks a lot about politics. She also talks about theology from a Protestant perspective. And so I, I, I had watched this interview and I don't really know what specifically interested me about it, but I decided to go listen to more of Allie Beth Stuckey's uh, podcast. And I ended up changing a lot of my views on politics by listening to that because I had never listened to conservative politics before. I had never even considered listening to, to any conservative politics. I was very, I had always voted Democrat. Um, so I ended up changing a lot of my political views and at the same time being finding myself more and more open to learning about Christianity and Jesus. So I got myself a Bible uh, to read, not expecting to become a Christian, but just to look into. I wanted to understand more about this Christian worldview, this Christian perspective on morality and sexuality and just everything. So through that process though, I ended up doing a lot of research. I'm a student at heart, so I do a lot of research. I've been studying Christianity for eight months, basically, day in and day out. And Catholicism, I've been studying more like three or four months. So um, I was very just in it. And I was looking up stuff about the historical evidence for the resurrection. And through that, I believed that the resurrection had happened. I felt that there was enough historical evidence to believe that this happened. And then once I believed that, it became, okay, what am I going to do with this? Because if this is true, then my whole life has to change. And it's not just that it has to change, but that I want it to change and that I want God in my life, that I want Jesus in my life. I think that Jesus and God know better than I do about how to run my life. Clearly, up until this point, I have not done that great of a job. Um, and what I mean by that is that I was a very cynical, not totally joyless, but a cynical, joyless, purposeless, selfish human being um, up until that point. I did not think there was anything really wrong with that, that that is just the way that it, it worked, that, you know, that life was. And it was not until I started watching Christian movies like The Case for Christ, for example, where I would just find myself bawling my eyes out just thinking about how much this person Jesus loved me enough to die for me, even though I'm so unworthy, even though all of us are so unworthy. And I don't know, I guess I had a heart change. Um, I feel that Christ gave me a new heart. And I've never been as happy as I am in my entire life. So, um, <laughs> there's that. Um, okay, so then I started going to a non-denominational evangelical church here in my town. Um, I was going to a weekly Bible study, women's Bible study. And I guess it just didn't take me very long to realize that may, that was not the place for me. Um, the more I looked into Catholicism, the more I dove into that, I just fell in love with it. I believed that it was true. Uh, I just, the thing about Protestantism for me is that everybody thinks, everybody interprets the Bible differently. And it's very hard to build your life um, on a strong foundation if the foundation is constantly shifting underneath you. So with Protestantism, um, they have some positives, like they're really good at uh, being in the culture without being of the culture, I guess. Um, well, actually, I shouldn't even say really good, but like I like their music and um, they're really good at evangelization. Um, they're really good at 
the um, sharing, showing, sharing, like helping you feel the love of God, um, which is wonderful. So, but for me, I need something a little more concrete. And that's what I really like about the Catholic Church. They uh, have not, they, their moral and their social teachings are concrete. Um, they do not change just because the culture is changing and we are all deciding that we kind of want to do whatever we want to do when we want to do it. Um, so anyways, but also it's not just that. It was, it's the tradition, it's the saints, it's Mary, it's the Eucharist, it's just, it's being a part of a 2,000 year old church. It's a, it's just I love it and I love talking about it. I want to talk about it every day and I don't have anybody to talk to about it. Um, I mean, I do have, I do have a wonderful friend who has, who is uh, seeing me through this process, um, but I don't want to bother her so much. So anyways, um, she is actually going to be my confirmation. Well, my bap, she's going to be there for my baptism. And so she's my, she's going to be my sponsor for my baptism and my confirmation, which is super exciting that's going to be happening in May. So I'm going to be baptized, have first communion and be confirmed into the Catholic Church in May. I'm super excited about it. But anyways, back to what it was, back to my story. So um, after I decided that Catholicism was the way that I wanted to go, I reached out to three different priests in the area because I had been, it had been recommended to me to not go through the RCIA process with a layman, if possible. Um, to go through it with a priest because they they are just they know more about theology and um, I'm glad that I did that because I'm actually going through the process a lot faster than if I had gone through the whole RCIA process that they want you to do so um, yeah I reached out to three different priests and the only priest that got back to me was the one from the parish where my mother was baptized 53 years ago so I just think that's so cool that I am going to be baptized in the same church that my mother was baptized in 50 plus years ago. Um, but yeah, so my process has been a little faster than um, other people's, but, the, but, I, but I also have been studying Christianity and Catholicism for eight months, day in and day out. Um, so I'm just, I'm, I'm further along than I think many people are when they start their process. So um, my full RCIA is technically only going to be three months. So there's a tip for you. If you want to become Catholic, try to find a priest that will work one-on-one -on -one with you. Um, you might be able to get through the process a little faster, especially if they see that you are farther ahead than, than, uh, than you would, would otherwise be. So I guess that's kind of all I wanted to say in this video in particular. If you have any specific questions, I can maybe try to flesh them out in another video. But um, yeah, I'm really excited to be here and to be part of the community and to share my love of Catholicism and to meet new people. Um, it, it's, it's hard to meet people in 2021 who, um, are, who, who are not just Catholic, but want to be devout Catholics and really take their spirituality and their religion very seriously. So um, I'm really hoping that through this, I will meet some of those awesome people. Um, so that's it. Um, thank you so much for hanging out with me and I will see you in the next video. Thanks. God bless.